Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is June 29th, 2018. Now for this segment of our cl global climate and clean energy analysis video blog, I'm going to talk a bit about some new science that has come out in the journal Nature. Uh, but before I do, I'd like to draw your attention to an excellent article on the same subject by Chris Mooney over at the Washington Post earlier this week entitled, A Huge Stretch of the Arctic Ocean is Rapidly Turning into the Atlantic. And that's not a good sign. Uh, Chris Mooney goes further into the details here. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and provide you with a brief overview of what the new science is finding. Now the region in question, according to the New Nature Study, is an area of ocean known as the Barents Sea. And the Barents Sea lies between Greenland, the Arctic Ocean proper, Northern Europe, and Western Siberia, including the, the Kara and Laptev Sea regions. And so and it's this zone here so roughly between Greenland and Svalbard, and it abuts to the North Atlantic south of the Straits of Greenland and in the Iceland region. So this region of ocean historically has tended to house quite a bit more ice, uh, quite a bit more ocean ice in particular, and and recently this ice has been retreating and as a result there are a number of significant observed changes to this section of ocean called the Barents Sea that are ongoing and these changes are making the Barents Sea act a lot more like the North Atlantic from a climate and temperature balance and potentially ecosystem balance perspective. Now, you might see a light, lot of white in this image. That's because a lot of what we're looking at here is cloud cover. I'll go ahead and change the frame so you can see the clouds move. If we're talking about ice edge, what we're, where the ice edge is is in this region here near Greenland, north of Svalbard, and then running in toward the Kara Sea. And traditionally, for this time of year, I'm going to look at a, a map from NSIDC. So the region of ocean we are looking at is here on this NSIDC visual. And so here's Greenland, here's Northern Europe. Uh, this is the Arctic sea ice. And the yellow line here is the average extent of sea ice for this time of year. And so, as you can see, this large zone here near Svalbard and moving in towards Siberia is gone. And this, this represents thousands, tens of thousands of square miles of ocean that have been newly liberated. So, what the science has found, and I'm going to go ahead and read you the, the overview for this recent report entitled Arctic warming hotspot in the northern Barents Sea is linked to declining sea ice import. And what the study states is the Arctic has warmed dramatically over recent decades with recent with I'm sorry with greatest temperature increases observed in the northern Barents Sea. The warming signatures are not constrained to the atmosphere but extend throughout the water column. Here using a compilation of hydro graphic observations from 1917 to 2016, we investigate the link between changing sea ice import and this Arctic warming hotspot. A sharp increase in ocean temperature and salinity is apparent from the mid-2000s onward, which we show can be linked to a recent decline in sea ice import and corresponding loss of fresh water, leading to weakened ocean stratification, enhanced vertical mis mixing, and increased upward fluxes of heat and salt that prevent ice for sea ice formation and increase ocean heat content. Thus, the northern Barents Sea may soon complete a transition 
from a cold and stratified Arctic to a warm and well-mixed Atlantic-dominated climate regime. Now, that's pretty straightforward language for science. What I'm going to try to do is provide a bit of a little bit of a translation for you there. So, so what the science is finding is that the sea ice, as it melts and retreats, redu reduces the amount of fresh water that flows into the northern Barents Sea region. And what sea ice allows to do when, it, when it's more prevalent and when it moves out into a zone, and as it melts, it creates a cool water layer that sequesters a warm water layer beneath. And so this, this cool water layer, known as the Arctic layer, and the, the meltwater layer, tend to generate this stratified ocean environment that, that keeps the surface waters cooler, enables more ice formation, and provides a, a feedback that, that keeps the environment stable and cold. But as sea ice retreats, you end up with more warm water upwelling, a loss of this fresh water layer, and more heat radiating into the atmosphere and you know, being absorbed by the direct sun's rays during summertime. So, so what this causes it is an environmental change that is much more like the North Atlantic. Now I'm going to, to look at some, uh, some maps showing sea surface temperatures in the northern Barents to give you an idea of the change. The, the nature study provides its own graphics, but I'm going to go ahead and, and look at some, some maps that, that show some of the anomaly temperatures. So, so this is a NOAA ESRL anomaly map. And, and the region that we're looking at here is the Barents, particularly the northern Barents. And it's a small section of the map, but as you can see, these areas in yellow and orange are, are warmer than normal in the range of 0 0.5 to 2.5 degrees. Celsius above normal, and there tends to be a hot oceans zone here. I don't know if that's sufficient, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up Earth Null School and give you guys another look. Just bear with me for one second. So we're going to go ahead and look at the northern Barents Sea sea surface temperatures anomalies that are presently ongoing according to Earth Null School. And I'm going to go ahead and activate for currents. So as we can see in this graphic here now, this graphic is uh, picking up ice. So I think these readings near Svalbard are, are probably not quite as accurate as you go north. But you see this very, this very warm area of water just off Svalbard that's approximately 8 degrees Celsius above average. Another very hot pool that's around 6.4 degrees Celsius above average. And for much of the Barents, you see above average sea surface temperatures. And also in most sea surface temperature anomaly graphs, you'll find similar departures. So in this NOAA NCEP map, we see much warmer than normal sea surface temperatures in the northern Barents. And for this DMI sea surface temperature anomaly map, we find that uh, sea surface temperatures are, are warmer to much warmer than normal throughout the Barents and into the northern Barents. So, so as this occurs, according to the new science, as, as this warming occurs, the Barents Sea is becoming a lot more like the Arctic, I'm sorry, the Atlantic Ocean. And, and this has significant, and in the current climate regime, likely permanent to long-term impacts. And so, so it's, a, it's a serious concern. And I, and I urge you to, to read the thoughts of uh, Chris Mooney to get further explanation.